Hey guys, this is Dr. Kelsey at Kelsey K9, and I'm here with Dr. Rush. And so we want to take a <clears throat> go a little bit deeper dive into this issue that the FDA um, and the FDA basically has come out with this. There's a potential link or association between um, grain-free diets and the uh, issue of dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a heart condition. Okay, so a linkage between grain-free and heart condition. So FDA started looking at this back in July of 2018, and they have been getting reports basically of dogs um, that normally do not get dilated cardiomyopathy or this heart condition. This is a um, that typically is an issue that's just in giant breed dogs like Great Danes um, and Irish Wolfhounds and Dobermans. Those are the typical breeds that get this. But the report, the incidence of dilated card cardiomyopathy really went up with um, a lot of other breeds. And it didn't matter the breed and the age. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So they started investigating it. And that's why they were tipped off because, again, these different breeds were getting this uh, disease. Now, when we talk about grain free, Basically what we're looking at, and uh, this is one of the ones, it's a grain free from Taste of the Wild, but there's other brands that we're going to talk about as well. Um, and they have a high portion uh, of their diet is made with peas and lentils and legumes that are uh, like sweet potatoes and things like that. Um, so that was one of, that was the main issue is these grain free diets that have these products in there. Um, and again, they just see the only thing, the only correlation that they've really found so far is the linkage between these dogs that were fed grain-free and are now experiencing this heart condition. Yeah, so as uh, Dr. Kelsey said, it, it kind of started about a year ago where they were noticing an association. They were even seeing uh, more than one dog in the same household that, again, were not the typical breeds for these heart conditions. Um, that kind of tipped them off and said, hey, there might be a correlation here. Um, what is difficult is it doesn't seem um, to be kind of the classic taurine deficiency, which some people may have heard of as an amino acid that has been linked to heart disease. Um, so they started noticing that, you know, hey, these breeds that were fed um, grain-free diets are starting to develop heart disease. It's a little bit unusual. So um, the Golden Retriever has kind of uh, gotten a lot more kind of social media awareness, um, but they are certainly one of the breeds that we see um, but it, it's a bit concerning that these guys tend to not be clinical meaning that they're not showing signs and this heart disease is there and it's a wide range of breeds just not your typical um, large breed dogs that, that are uh, more associated with that type of disease mm -hmm. um, in terms of the food you know in the study it basically most all of it or main part of it is dry food um, which of course that's pretty obvious I guess most people end up feeding dry food but they did actually see some dogs that are fed uh, raw food as well as canned food as well um, there's a whole list and we're going to put the link to the FDA article uh, in below here in the, in the, um, in the video uh, but brands uh, and they list them out here it's Akana, Zignature, Taste of the Wild, Four Health, Earthborn Holistic, Blue Buffalo, From Merrick um, Origin, Nature Valley, Nutrisource, Nutro, Rachel Ray even. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, you know, so these foods, again, this is the, these are the ones that the FDA has identified. Again, so we're not making a claim that you know, these foods are, 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 are bad per se in, the, in terms of a brand. We're just saying these are the ones that the FDA has listed that they've seen dilated cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy with uh, in, that, in those grain-free diets that they make. Um, so again, in, uh, in the study, over 90% of the products were grain free. So I think we've kind of emphasized that. And she mentioned too, there's not a, it doesn't appear to be a taurine deficiency, um, which again, sometimes can be associated with heart disease, but it's, it's not in this case. Yeah, so the, the question becomes is what do you do um, before you start to panic? It does seem that most of the heart disease that um, might be coming from these foods is reversible. So, um, you know, first thing you should do is, of course, check your bag of pet food. Is it a grain-free diet? Um, if so, it, it's certainly time to have a discussion. Um, generally speaking, there is little evidence that grain-free diets are more beneficial than diets that do contain grain. Uh, and obviously within the past year with this kind of ominous study that dogs might have underlying heart disease, um, it, it might be good to consider to avoid those grain-free diets, being that we now have this camp of evidence to show that they, they could potentially be detrimental to your pet's health. 
Um, so as, as far as the recommendations go, if you do have a dog that has pre-existing heart disease and is fed a grain-free diet, would definitely recommend giving us a call. Uh, we've probably already talked to you about that if they have a heart murmur, um, that if some, for some reason they're fed a grain-free diet and we're unaware, that might require more aggressive screening. Um, and that could include chest x-rays to look for signs of heart enlargement all the way up to um, the EKG, which is the electrical impulses through the heart to even an ultrasound of the heart. Um, if you have a dog who is otherwise healthy and has been fed a grain-free diet their entire lives, particularly if they're one of these large breed dogs that's more prone to dilated heart disease, definitely get them off of it. Uh, if you have a breed that is not more prone, again, we're starting to see heart disease in these breeds, again, a correlation with these diets, I would consider starting to, to transition them to a diet containing grain. Um, nutrition is kind of an emotionally charged and somewhat controversial subject it's certainly not a one-size-fits-all um, so call us talk to us uh, if we know your pet we're likely to be able to make a good recommendation based on their history their breed maybe right. the recent lab work any issues they've had skin ears digestive that sort of thing um, but but call us it's a conversation to have uh, there are certain breed or certain brands of food that do millions of dollars of research with their pet foods um, that have done feeding trials that, that most often have a diet that would most likely fit your, pest, your pet's best interest. But um, long story short, it's a conversation and your pet's nutrition should be tailored specifically to your pet and that's what we're here to help you with. Um, and as a reminder, if you're not a current client, um, a new client, a new patient exam is completely free. We're more than happy to sit down and talk with you, take a look at your pet and, and make good recommendations. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, hopefully you have uh, found this um, video very helpful. And again, if you have any questions, give us a call, reach out to us, email us, and we'll address them. Thank you.